welcome to the SAP HANA development for SAP Business One e-learning session, which will cover SAP add-on migration. My name is Eddie Naveau, and I am part of the SAP Business One Solution Architect team. The main objectives of this presentation will be to discuss the process of migrating an add-on developed for SAP Business One from Microsoft SQL Server to an SAP Business One add-on running on SAP HANA. To understand the differences in SQL syntax between Microsoft SQL Server and SAP HANA. Talk about the SQL Converted tool and how to use it, and finally, to explain moving from the traditional SDK add-on to an add-on using Service Layer and SAP HANA platform. The agenda will be an overview of add-on migration, analyze current add-on code, migrate the add-on, and then optimize the add-on. Some of the questions that may come to mind about moving our existing solution for SAP Business One from Microsoft SQL Server to HANA may be, where do I start? What are the steps that I need to do to make this change? Will the migration from Microsoft SQL Server to SAP HANA for my SAP Business One solution be complex? What knowledge do I need? Will I need more resources? And how should I proceed? This presentation will attempt to assist you in taking those questions and boiling them down into clear steps as to how to move forward with the migration of your solution from Microsoft SQL Server to SAP HANA. The first step is to analyze the current add-on code you have for SAP Business One from Microsoft SQL Server. Is this a solution created with the SAP Business One SDK? Is this a solution that was created with the integration framework? Migration, depending on what solution was used to create the add-on, such as the SDK for example, what do we need to change to have it work on SAP HANA? Are these tools to assist with the migration? What are the best practices for migration? And lastly, optimization. Understanding how SAP HANA with SAP Business One runs. If we use the SDK as an example, is everything the same? Even if it is, is there a better method for my solution to use on SAP HANA? Does my add-on deal with heavy transaction loads? If so, has performance been an issue in the past for us? And other such questions. When we talk about SAP HANA, while it is an in-memory database, it is so much more than just that. SAP HANA is a platform on which to build world-class solutions that integrate with SAP Business One, all while putting the mobile and browser experience first for ease of user interaction. SAP HANA offers a platform that allows for integration using online transaction processing and online analytical processing. To add to that, SAP HANA provides for text analysis, spatial analysis, predictive analysis, and so much more. The two options for SAP Business One for SAP HANA are SAP Business One Analytics, powered by SAP, and SAP Business One for SAP HANA. SAP Business One Analytics is a separate hybrid solution whereby if a customer has SAP Business One running on Microsoft SQL Server, but needs to do data intensive analytics, they can use SAP Business One Analytics to pull data from the Microsoft SQL Server installation into SAP HANA for analytics. SAP Business One for SAP HANA combines both the analytics features of SAP HANA as well as the transaction processing functionality of a traditional database, but that database is in memory. Let's look at the first starting point with respect to add-on migration, analysis of our existing solution. If our solution for SAP Business One on Microsoft SQL Server was created using the SAP Business One SDK, and we want to continue to use that investment on SAP HANA, that's fine. As far as SAP Business One for SAP HANA, the database structure remains the same. All system tables and fields, user-defined tables and fields, and user-defined objects are the same. The SP SPO transaction notification stored procedure is also still part of the SAP Business One company database and also still the same. So, if we have the same architecture between SAP Business One on Microsoft SQL Server and SAP Business One for SAP HANA, we have the same add on methodology. The SDK still uses common components, namely the DI and UI APIs. There is no change for SDK calls or object usage. We have the same stored procedures and the same integration framework. Does that mean that there's nothing to be done, you might ask? 
just like moving from one version of SAP Business One to another, like let's say SAP Business One Nine went to Nine Two, we have to do the same compatibility checks as far as the business logic for forms, tables, and menus, as well as overall infrastructure changes. The same is true for the migration from Microsoft SQL Server to SAP HANA. Some of the key areas that we need to consider with migrating to SAP HANA are case sensitivity, sorting, data types, predicates, and others where SQL is used. Two references that will assist with migration are the best practices of SQL or SQL usage for SAP Business One version for SAP HANA add-ons and the SAP HANA SQL reference manual. With respect to an add-on built using the SDK, we need to look at both the DI and UI APIs and look at objects used in our code where we use direct SQL statements such as with data tables and grids as an example in the UI API and SQL statements using the record set object with the DI API, any proprietary SQL generators or processors, and of course any SQL we may use in the Query Manager. These will need to be migrated from Microsoft SQL Server Transact SQL to SAP HANA SQL Script. Other customizations such as Crystal Reports, any changes to the SP SBO transaction notification, and any user-defined queries and formatted searches may also need to be migrated. As well as any direct connections to the SAP Business One database using ODBC, JDBC, ADO.NET, etc. Lastly, another consideration would be any SQL specific functionality such as with views or functions written from Microsoft SQL Server. Now that we have analyzed our current code and found where our changes need to be made, it is time to migrate our add-on to the SAP Business One for SAP HANA. We should first recompile our add-on code with the new DI and UI APIs from the version of SAP Business One for SAP HANA that we are going to be migrating to. Apply any compatibility changes such as to forms, tables, menus, etc. And start migrating any Microsoft Transact SQL queries to SAP HANA SQL Script. Both Microsoft Transact SQL and SAP HANA SQL Script are ANSI standard compliant. That being said, both Microsoft and SAP extend the SQL beyond the ANSI standards. SQL Script is what SAP HANA uses for complex business logic programming. Because of the extension after the ANSI standard, there are differences in some areas that will need to be addressed when migrating your add-on. Some areas that differ between Microsoft Transact SQL and SQL Script are in case sensitivity, sorting, where SQL Script is based on HANA, uh, Unicode, data types, predicate operator expressions, and, and functions. Migration, as mentioned, will consist of changing the basic grammar from Microsoft Transact SQL to SQL Script. Most of the grammar is similar and can be reused. There is also a semi-automatic tool that can assist us in converting from Microsoft Transact SQL to SQL Script. As previously mentioned, any native Microsoft SQL object will need to be migrated to SAP HANA objects, such as stored procedures to SAP HANA procedures, Microsoft Views to SAP HANA Views, and any functions that may be part of our add-on need to be reviewed to identify and correct any SQL. If we have altered the SPO transaction notification in our company databases, we will also need to review that SQL, as previously mentioned, to verify if changes are required, and finally, any user-defined queries and or formatted searches in SAP Business One will also need to be reviewed to see if modifications are required. Another area for migration is the connection to the SAP Business One database. The connection string in our add-on will need to change to accommodate SAP HANA as the connection to the database, which will have a different server, a system log and a password, where in Microsoft SQL Server, the SQL user may have been SA, as an example. The default when setting up SAP HANA is system. This slide illustrates some of the connection changes. As part of our conversation from Microsoft SQL Server to SAP HANA, SAP has a conversion tool that can assist us with Microsoft Transact SQL to SAP HANA SQL Script. 
While this tool can help with converting most of our SQL, depending on the complexity of that SQL, the tool may not in some cases be able to do translation. In this case, we will manually need to modify our SQL. The conversion tool is available on the SAP Software Community Network. The tool has two modes of operation. A graphical interface is shown here in the slide and a command line option. Help documentation comes with a tool for installation and execution of the tool. Let's look at a demonstration of the SQL Converter tool. As we spoke of in the previous slides for this SQL Converter demonstration, the Converter can be downloaded from SAP Partner Edge from the SAP Business One version for SAP HANA and then by clicking on the appropriate link. If I open my browser, you can see where I'm logged into SAP Partner Edge and then choosing SAP Business One for SAP HANA and then by scrolling down and choosing the how to convert SQL from Microsoft SQL Server database to SAP HANA database. This will then allow me to download the SQL Converter, which I've created a folder called SQL Converter. This is the zip file that is downloaded. Once extracted, you'll see the contents of the file. One of the key files is how to convert from Microsoft SQL Server to SAP HANA SQL. This PDF will document all the information on how to install the tool, set the tool up, and then information on what is supported in the different versions of SQL as far as Transact SQL and SQL Script and SAP HANA. To run the tool, within the extracted files, you'll see converter.exe. You simply need to double click on the converter.exe. Now some of the first things that you'll notice are some general settings and then your HANA settings. So for general settings, some of the things you can automatically set is case fixer, as we talked about in the previous PowerPoint slides, that SAP HANA using SQL Script is case sensitive. So I'm setting that flag, format my output, and then of course I'm going to by default provide conversion comments and we'll see what that looks like in a second. You also have login information to your SAP HANA server and the database that you want to work with. Now on the left hand pane you can see I have an input file um, which I've navigated out to or I can navigate out to by clicking the folder icon and navigating out to in this case my input.sql file. This is the contents of the Microsoft SQL Server Transact SQL. I simply need to then click on the run converter and you'll see down at the bottom that my translating input file please wait. Now as we're waiting for this to be actually converted it's going through the information in the left hand pane and then based on best practices for SAP HANA and SQL script it will give me a conversion report. When I close you can see that my three statements or I have three statements broken down in as far as insert into is from the single insert into on the transact SQL side this has been what's converted to SAP HANA. You can see because I have provide conversion comments turned on I have a uh, comment here in green that tells me that it's been broken down into the three. And this concludes the demonstration of using the conversion tool. Add-ons that currently integrate with Microsoft SQL Server and are being migrated to SAP HANA should be able to use a single code line that supports both databases. Some options to allow for supporting both are to use .NET resource files where we can store queries for each database type. We want to make sure that our code is clean. We should try to avoid if-else conditions and try to have queries in a single location. Keep the appropriate strings in the code for each of the databases. We need to be careful to organize our code and set the correct queries for the correct environment. If we use dynamic SQL generation, possibly define generic objects so that the same code can be shared regardless of database. Now let's look at optimizing the current add-on that has been built using the SDK and moving it to newer SAP Business One technologies such as the Service Layer and SAP HANA. With SAP Business One for SAP HANA, there is a paradigm shift in moving the business logic of an add-on from the SAP Business One client, as we have been doing with the SAP Business One traditional add-ons, to moving the add-on application to the server, keeping the application close to the data on the server. Where we have used tightly coupled solutions with the SAP Business One SDK using the COM APIs and installing the add-on on the client, we can now use industry standard technologies such as HTML5, SAP UI5, and Fiori for the user interface where mobile and browser are first. We can 
use RESTful server-side integration with SAP HANA and the service layer. For loosely coupled so solutions, there is not code deployed on or with SAP Business One for SAP HANA's implementation. Our solution resi resides externally to SAP Business One and connects remotely via the service layer. Because of this methodology, our SAP Business One implementation becomes easier as with SAP Cloud Platform, we can separate security, lifecycle management, hardware, operating system, etc. by building our solution in our own cloud and integrating to an SAP Business One implementation using the service layer for SAP HANA. For SAP Business One for SAP HANA extensibility, the main integration point is the service layer. The service layer has the same business object coverage as the SAP Business One SDK data interface, or DIAPI, but it is built on core protocols such as HTTP and OData. The service layer offers high scalability through parallel processing as well as high availability through the use of load balancing. The SAP Business One service layer caters to the need for mobile and web applications and allows high volume transaction processing and analytics as you have one box for online transaction processing and online analytical processing and for your development platform. These next two slides show where SAP One has been with respect to integration and extensibility and where we are going. Using SAP Business One for SAP HANA, we of course still have the SAP Business One SDK components such as the data interface and user interface APIs as listed on the left. These can still be used with SAP Business One for SAP HANA with a traditional add-on. But with SAP HANA, we now have for the data integration the service layer, which allows us to move from the SDK COM APIs to full server-side business logic using industry standards such as HTTP and OData. For the user interface, where we have also used the UI API from the SDK, which is a proprietary to SAP Business One, we can now use standard off-the-shelf HTML5 for the presentation layer, which is an industry standard. So again, we can see how we are moving away from COM-based APIs to OData and web services that are natively built for mobile first. For traditional extensions, typically Visual Studio.net has been used. Now we have, with the SAP HANA, the SAP HANA Studio and Web Workbench, which is an integrated set of tools for development leveraging the full SAP HANA platform and all of its advanced capabilities such as OData, XMLS, Business Function Library, Predictive Analysis Library, R Integration, and much more. Instead of a client-based integration where code is on the presentation server where the SAP Business One client resides, now we can keep code close to the data, i.e. all code resides in the server, and we are then able to leverage the service layer scalability and performance over traditional client-side client applications. And finally, what we have called add-ons with the traditional SDK integration, we now have applications where we bring innovation closer to the data and with SAP HANA and Service Layer. Because of this, SAP Business One is now consumed more easily on your mobile device or in your browser. This slide goes over the skill sets required for development for SAP Business One for SAP HANA where we do not use the SAP Business One SDK, but rather a pure SAP HANA play using, on the front end, Fiori, SAP UI5, and HTML5, as well as client-side JavaScript. On the back end, calculation logic using HANA modeling and analytics, HANA SQL and C using SQL script, control lo flow logic using XSJS, which is server-side JavaScript, and XSO data, and then on the advanced data processing side, with SAP HANA, things like text analysis, text mining, sentiment analysis, spatial processing, predictive analysis, and of course the graphing engine, as well as much more. This slide contains useful links with respect to migrating SAP Business One from Microsoft SQL Server to SAP Business One for HANA. This concludes the presentation of SAP HANA development for SAP Business One e-learning session covering SAP add-on migration. Thank you for your time.